Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I am very excited for today's episode because it's going to be another harvest video, but it's also going to be pointing out some things that I uh, had questions on the last harvest video. And mainly what I wanted to cover was this mess back here. A lot of people were asking, Luke, why don't you pull that stuff out? It's really messy and you could probably plant some more stuff. And yeah, I could. Uh, but the reason why I'm leaving this here, this mess of mixed salad greens, is because I want to save it for the bees. There's a lot of brassica plants, so stuff that is uh, kind of in the, the family of broccoli. So there's stuff like arugula, there is bok choy or pak choy, there is actual, uh, there is actual lettuce somewhere in there, uh, there is spinach somewhere in there, there is mustard greens still being harvested. But the thing that the bees love the most is the pak choy, the mustard greens, and the arugula here. Those are just absolutely loaded with flowers. And uh, whoa, we got a storm kicking up here. But they're loaded with flowers and the bees absolutely love them. So we've been saving them for the bees so that they can have a food source when there's not a whole lot of food going around right about this time. So it's kind of that intermediate uh, kind of time where the, the goldenrod has not blossomed yet and that's their kind of last food source before the frost. And the clover is pretty much done because it's gotten hot and a lot of the clover has stopped blossoming. So there's just a, a need for some food. And so that, uh, that's what this is about. And I can totally see, I mean, I'm looking and all over the place, there's honeybees all over the place. And on top of that, they're pollinating these plants. And now instead of me just ripping them out, I'm going to have food for the bees and I'm going to be able to, be able to save seed because all of these flowers here, uh, once they drop off, there is seed pods remaining. So I'm actually getting more seed than I normally would because the bees are pollinating on them. So I'm getting really good, uh, really good quality fruit set here um, all, along the, all along the stems. So that's why I got that mess there. The next question is, Luke, what type of bell peppers are you growing? Uh, because there's a lot of different types of bell peppers. I am growing a California Wonder bell pepper. That was a really popular question that came up and I just wanted to cover that as well. I, I didn't know if I mentioned it or not, the variety, uh, I just said bell pepper. Uh, but there are some beautiful peppers here. They're not quite ripe. They're not quite something that I wanna pick because I think uh, they are actually a golden, uh, go a golden or a red California Wonder Bell. So they will change colors, but, uh, but that's the variety. And then the very last thing is, is how are the, uh, the orange Jerusalini is doing? Because I have not harvested any yet and I'm going to be saving a ton of seed to basically uh, preserve this, this variety because they come all the way from Italy, believe it or not. Yeah, so a viewer in Italy sent them to me. He contacted me around January of this year and he said, Luke, I have some, some tomatoes here that I'm pretty sure you don't have there in the States. I was wondering if I could send you some. And I said, yeah, you know, give me a little backstory on what you want to send me. And his name is Marcus. And Marcus had uh, one variety specifically that he wanted to send me and that was the Orange Russellini. And I have no clue how it's spelled. I can't find it anywhere. A lot of people tried to find it and they keep asking me, Luke, what is the spelling? How do you get this seed? And I honestly have no clue. He said it's a family heirloom that they've been growing in Italy for as long as he can remember. And basically they grow it without stakes. They just let it grow right along the ground. No staking, nothing. And it's extremely blight resistant, extremely productive tomato. He said it's a little on the smaller side, but what it makes up for size, it makes up for in productivity. So we're gonna check it out because there's actually some fruit ripening, believe it or not. I'm so excited and uh, I'm, I'm really, really excited to show you guys what the fruit looks like. And oddly enough, it's not orange at all. So I, I contacted him and I asked him if it was supposed to be uh, the color that it is. And he said, yep, it's been like that and no one knows why, but that's the name. So uh, yes, so I'm gonna show you Orange Jerusalem now. Let's go check that out. And we're gonna get to harvesting some stuff. And there's some other tomatoes that I wanna show you as well. So let's go. Let's check these out here. All right, coming on in, we can see that there is, first off, no blight. You can see right down in there, 
all those leaves right along the ground. A little bit of yellowing right here, just a teeny tiny little bit of yellowing, but absolutely by no means would I consider that blight ridden. And uh, you know, you look in there, green as can be. Leaves are right on the ground. Absolutely amazing. See all that, see all those roots right there? The, the roots are just coming down like crazy and uh, absolutely no blight. So there you go. This is the orange Russellini and I see some tomatoes right here. Look how beautiful these are. They're just the most vibrant red tomatoes I've ever seen. And they are so perfect. Check that out. This is the orange Russellini in person for the first time ever. And uh, I'm gonna have a taste test for you too. And then the rest I'll be saving for seed. I'm not gonna be eating any of these. They're all gonna go to uh, seed production. So there's another one. There's another one right here. A little bit smaller. And uh, you know, I'm not sure, but look, look how thick that stem is. Oh my goodness. Check out how thick that stem is. It's thicker than my thumb. It's just a tank of a stem. And I'm sure that is, that's why that it can grow along the ground so well. And I'm sure that's why they don't need any staking because it just looks like a tree. Um, so there you go, there's that. So we do have another kind of first, and this is the Kellogg's Breakfast. We've grown this before. It's a beautiful, beautiful tomato. Absolutely stunning and extremely large. But these are the Kellogg's Breakfast, and this is the first one that's ripe. And I wanted to pick this live on camera here. It's, uh, oh, it's beautiful. It's so, so ripe. There you go, there's a look at that. First glance of this gorgeous specimen here. All righty, come on off. Okay, there. Check that out. A little bit of cat facing, typical of a heirloom tomato. A little bit of that kind of stuff going on, but all in all, a stunning, stunning tomato. Very, very pleased. All right, so we are done harvesting. Not a super huge harvest today. We end up with four peppers, which uh, that pepper plant just keeps on producing back there, those two banana peppers. And uh, we were able to get one beautiful Kellogg's breakfast tomato. Nice, large beefsteak variety, orange and super, super sweet. Oh, it's the best. Love this tomato. We got, uh, one Roma, we got uh, three, uh, actually two, of the uh, Chadwick cherries. I have not yet tried these, but I'll try those later. We have then a kind of mixed assortment of the orange or Cellinis. So some of these are smaller here. I'm not gonna be saving seeds from the smaller ones because I'm guessing not enough, they, they produce so much fruit that not enough energy can go into making full size fruits. But we got, we got here six orange Jerusalinis. Check those out, absolutely stunning, stunning tomatoes. But I'm going to taste the kind of smaller size one and leave the other big ones. We're gonna be taste testing this orange Jerusalini here. Beautiful, absolutely, it's almost like a matte red. It's not a shiny red. It's just a very, it's a very matte red color uh, and it's just absolutely beautiful in every way. So we're gonna try this out now. Oh, <laughs> it's very juicy. Oh my gosh. Wow. The, uh, the flavor in this is outstanding. It's outstanding. I have no, I have absolutely no words. It gave me goosebumps, okay? That says something. The seeds are rather large, but the flavor, oh my, oh my. It is so incredibly sweet that 
it starts off with almost like a sour. It has kind of a kind of a lemony, citrus sour, and not at all violating my taste buds. It's very fruity right off the bat. And then on the 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 back, once you have chewed it and started enjoying it, it's it's got tones of like strawberry. And I'm not even joking you, this is the sweetest, most, this is the sweetest tomato I have ever tasted. It beats the sweet 100s, it beats the sun golds, it beats the sun rays. It be, I mean, this, this is a mind blowing tomato, folks. I'm not even kidding you. I'm gonna be saving seeds from this. I will be saving incredible amounts of seeds for anyone that does not like tomato. I would not even call this a tomato. This tomato is more fruit than it is vegetable. This is everything that I've ever wanted from a tomato, but never been able to find. Oh my goodness. Every bite is amazing. I have no words. It's that amazing. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm tempted to eat another one, but I have to save it for seeds. So that kind of stinks. But I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. Hopefully you all are growing big or going home. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments box below. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hope that they can make them indoors. I'm going to be saving seeds from them, and I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye.